Good morning. So back on Southtown Garage here, we're um, got the injectors back from uh, NW Field Systems in Langley. Uh, wanted to give them a shout out. They did an awesome job. Tested these things right on the spot there. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any content. Six times a year, these giants battle each other for top placement in Japan's most beloved traditional sport, sumo. So it's a pass with flying colors. Now, one thing that uh, they gave me was a whole kit. I've got more parts inside. Um, I'll show you later. So these little gaskets here, you want to change these copper gaskets. Now they give you three different sizes. Uh, they give you, this is a medium, and they, they also have a large, and you don't use those ones. So they're, you'll lose power, which nobody wants to lose power. So if you can see the difference, these smaller ones, that's if you decide that you want to do more power, they say throw these in. And I'm like, well, I got the injectors out, and of course I'm going to put more power down. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. Now, to get this old one off, I had to wrestle it around a little bit. Um, I don't know whatever you're going to use. I, I just use my pliers. I don't recommend doing that too much because you could damage the uh, injector. So you have to be super careful. So I would you know again check the service manual see what it says but uh, you use what you use what you have I guess so anyways so I'm gonna throw this bad boy on here and throw the injector in nice clean copper gasket and then uh, I'm gonna get go ahead and throw all these in here and when I get to the end I'll uh, show you so one other thing we want to do before we uh, get these injectors in is uh, we want to clean the end of this part here. This is what clamps the injector in because we've got a little o-ring that goes around here and on just about every one I pulled out they all broke. It disintegrated the whole nine yards. It was beautiful. Um, so we want to clean these up and then uh, we'll put the injectors in and I'll show you all that other stuff. I always number all my bags that way I know exactly I guess this is number one cylinder. I know I'm putting everything back in the right order. So, uh, just to quickly show you, not touching the edge, just the copper washer, and then it comes off pretty, pretty easily. You wanna make sure you clean this whole area up first. I just use paper towel. Do not touch any of this with a wire wheel at all you'll wreck the injector. We know we already have really good injectors, so we don't want to we don't want to cause any issues. So when we go to put this back in, one thing we want to make sure of is this can come off. So we want to make sure that if you're having a little trouble once you get it into the hole that you're not sitting there trying to jam it. You could damage these and then you'll have to use a thicker one on one of your cylinders. So one is going to be a little less power. So this isn't going to give me more power right away, just to keep in mind. This is specifically thinner gasket for future power plants. So this isn't a performance upgrade by any means, but it allows, um, it allows for future, future upgrades. And while we have them out, we might as well just switch them over to the better ones. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw them in and then uh, we'll start bolting every, everything back together and um, we'll go from there. Not the, easiest, the most fun to get in but number one cylinder seems to be the easiest so I figured probably the easier to show. That one number two is probably the least fun to do because you've got all the fuel lines over top. The guy with a little bit of thinking ahead of time may have unbolted all this stuff around here so I want to make sure we're holding the or, or the uh, copper gasket with our fingers to sort of glide into place and I think I dropped it 
and there you go right there there's a prime example so if you look down in the cylinder the gaskets actually turn sideways so if we were to put pressure on that all we're going to do is wreck it so all i'm going to do is i'm going to straighten this out try not to leave too much hate mail uh, in my comments below if you don't mind So as you can see now, it's it's completely flat. And a, uh, another thing to also keep in mind is you don't want to get any contamination in there. It's very important to keep your fuel system clean. You could uh, cause some severe damage to your your engine if you get a whole lot of debris in there or any actually. Now all we have to do now is uh, put the nuts on and um, or the inserts in, fold everything down. You start hooking up our return lines. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned before, but there is right in the back here. Oh, you can't see it that well. But one of the return lines, so you can't really move this too much out of the way because there's a, a line that goes straight through uh, number six, in between number six and number five cylinder for your return. So it, it kind of be, is a bit of a pain, but um, I figured, I can't remember if I told you guys or not. Now I gotta put the nut certs in and we're good to go. Take this glove off here. You can see what the inside of the lip looks like. It's nice and clean. Go ahead and slide it on. My 15 sixteenths ratchet. Put this uh, o-ring on the top to keep more dirt out. Okay, now that that's done, we got the rest of these little copper gaskets to go on the fuel return lines. And we're gonna start from the back of the motor where it's the hardest and work our way forward. Oh, and uh, one thing to make sure of is that your, all your holes in the front here are lined up. And uh, yeah, I did forget one step here. Make sure I... Tighten that down. Thankfully this is a coming so it's not that bad to get it running after you've done this. It's not like a uh, Detroit or anything. Six. Okay, now I'll start the fun process of getting all these gaskets back in here. 
So this is our, one of our fuel filters. It's a screen and everything together. Uh, pulled it off just to clean all the gunk out inside. And I don't know if you can see that that well, but we just got a bit of buildup in there. So we just want to make sure it's all clean out. And then when we're doing the fuel filter, at least we don't have to worry about it. Um, sometimes it's something that can be missed because it's not something that's labeled replaceable for a few minutes at a time just to clean it out and then throw it back in. And then this is the screen that we're just going to wash out first or after. And now it's all clean and just dry it off and put it back in. So now we've got everything clean and put the pieces back together here. And there's this little castle nut that goes on top. It's really not a castle nut, but just a little nut with a 15 mil socket to tighten it down. We don't want to really want to tighten it too much, just maybe just just a little turn. No no pressure. We don't want to we don't want to damage this. Uh, I'd probably have to go to Cummins to get it. Couldn't get any uh, O-rings and stuff like that with this. Uh, again, probably have to go to Cummins for that. So if you're going to do this, don't do what I did. Make sure you get the O-ring kit from Cummins or your Dodge dealer um, or someone else that sells these fuel parts. Then that way uh, you're not as unprepared as I was. So you can see right up in here where we're going to put this. Just try to make it around and get her up in place here. Now this is just by the driver's side engine mount here. So if you're trying to figure out where in the heck this is, that's where we are. Get a socket on this uh, here bad boy. Not too much force. You're tightening it up just enough. Which is a pretty stupid statement, I guess. Just enough for me is different for someone else, but uh, you don't want to you don't want to tighten it on there as hard as you can. I guess that's what I should be trying to say. Anyways, that's done. Uh, we can't do the other fuel filter yet because uh, I have a broken sensor for the water separator, so we'll have to do that tomorrow. Thanks for watching this episode of Southtown Garage. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Let us know what, how we did in the comments and stick around for more Dodge content because we do have a fair bit coming to you, uh, specifically with doing some upgrades and also a stereo and the thing because I just love navigation and I can't stand not having something like that in that vehicle and as you probably have not seen, you haven't seen our old Maxima on here so that's gone. There's a few vehicles that are leaving but there's another thing to talk about too because we have so many, st so much stuff going on right now. Uh, what we're looking to do is try to put another video out on a different day um, specifically designed for some of our new new vehicles like the Ford Explorer. So what I was looking to do is add another video and we'll see how it goes to Friday's schedule um, and see how that that goes and see what you guys think. And we're going to be putting up more information, more in-depth information with regards to that. So if you've stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching. I hope you hope to see you again in our next video next Friday and then again next Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.